We're here at Oroville at the Veterans Memorial Park and this is my new to me 2021 Bass Cat era. We'll start off on the back end with the Merc Pro XS 4 Stroke 250. This is the first Merc I've ever owned. I've had Yamahas and Suzuki's up to this point, but I tell you what, this motor is a beast. Um, completely happy with it. On top of that, back here running the new Minn Kota Raptors. These things are stable. I could not do this with my talons or with power poles without them flexing massive. These things are built like a tank, that's for sure. On the Merc, I'm running the Fury 24 pitch. It is dinged up a little bit, so I'm going to have to send that to uh, have redone. Have the Sea Star jack plate, hydraulic plate, with the mount for my side imaging. Cup holder for the back guy. In the rear compartment. It's where I have my shutoff valve, my four batteries that are in the center. The center mass battery idea for weight management is awesome. Rick Pierce, you did a great job on that, by the way. Over in the side compartment, I have my throw cushion. I have my bottles of G-Juice, all my safety gear, my weigh-in bag. The other side on the back end is a ladder, which is always good if you have kids that want to go swimming or if you're clumsy or your co-angler is clumsy and tends to fall off the boat. I have the TH Marine steering lock clips on there. So the wrap is still on it from when Bassmaster Elite Series angler Bob Downey sold it to me. You can still see his name somewhat on there from peeling the the name off on it. This winter I'll be taking that wrap off probably. But it looks beautiful. So stepping up inside, continuing on the back end. On the other side we have the Minn Kota Precision MK460 PC and the second 26 gallon tank I believe it's got dual 26's in here for 52 gallons so then the next one up is a compartment just for basic storage now what's excellent for the 2021 model is this little triangle flip that comes out and you see you have this little little tray here only downside is when you have Minn Kota Raptor pumps right underneath there because that's what this hole is designed for is be able to access your power pole or Raptor pumps or access your screens for your live well system when those hydraulic hoses get put in there they hit the bottom of this tray which makes it sit up a little higher, but that's just my OCD. Oh, 
on the other side is the same design and that's just where I throw my my hummingbird screen protectors a little jar for miscellaneous stuff a little little bag a little bag for for tackle and whatnot and then it's, it has the, the same flip over here that the other side has so now we come to the live wells these are massive, absolutely massive. Bass Cat, well known for their triangular live wells. I mean, this should tell you how deep this is. I can put my arm all the way down here, palm flat on the bottom, and I'm almost up to my shoulder. And that's just the first spot. As you see, there's a collector spot way at the bottom that's another six inches deeper. It's got dual the dual spray bars in there, one for the fill, one for the aerator. Then you have this side. I, I tend to clip my clips right to the top row of, of holes there. That seems to work pretty well. But you are not gonna lose a fish in a Bass Cat live well. So the center, a nice step box to get to the back with dual cup holders. Cup holders was a big thing for me in a boat. Uh, you can ask my ABA co-angler Brian Walker I have pitched a fit a few times when accidentally kicking my soda can down the deck of the boat or forgetting it and blasting off down the lake and having it roll down the front deck so this is a two-stage box first stage you have your spot for just your your random stuff in there I have the protector screen for my Merck smart craft gauge keep some scale batteries an extra Raptor remote, case for my sunglasses. Gotta have some Aleve or Aspirin or whatever, a little multi-tool. A good luck bait. The crank I won one of my tournaments on Soyuz Lake a few years ago on. Retired now, but it did great for me. So, it also has a good grab bar good good uh oh crap handle for your for your co-angler now underneath it it's got this little little rubber piece that allows you to flip it up and you have a cooler with a little drain in the far bottom there so your passenger seat these are really comfy chairs by the way i've i've rode in or well, i should say ridden in many different uh different models of boats and I tell you what these are these are pretty darn comfy and another cup holder there got your rod area for your co-angler right along the side there with the strap to protect it then in here is another storage area I use this to throw my Washington tournament banner and some boat cleaning supplies in there and granted I forgot the one bottle of cleaner that I needed to clean the boat after my tournament yesterday. So the boat is a bit messy today. And this handle on the far side lights up and it is sturdy. That's what your co-angler would use as their left-sided oh crap handle and then the right would be over there on the box, which makes a pretty steady platform for them. So as far as your co-angler goes, the rod butts can go right in that little little circles there. If they have the extensions on the back with a big ball on it like some guys use, they will not fit in there, just an FYI. You'll probably have to stack them down in the bottom here. Have a little tray there. Uh, previous models used to have a actual little metal little, uh, little tray that you could flip open and, and put stuff in put your scale your cull balls that kind of stuff in they did it away for the 2021 model um, I probably would have liked it but I see the value of not having it there because I just randomly throw baits in it now rather than cluttering all over my deck and it's got a nice drain in there to drain water out so in the step well here is your second cooler and that's a dual position cooler you got your your riser on this side you could put like your sandwiches and stuff that you don't need to get wet but you still want them cold you could put them on that side this side 
all your ice and whatnot for your pop or or you could even use this as just a storage box if you wanted to depends on how much gear you have and how much gear you want to tote around with you i guess up top of that is a little tool tray i have two pairs of pliers and a pair of split ring pliers in there those come in handy i broke two treble hooks yesterday at my tournament so i had to use those ones so the driver's console same chair as the other side and both chairs flip you'll have storage underneath the chair i keep all my line underneath there along with the tennis balls that i put on the hummingbird mounts when i put my cover on that way it doesn't cut another thing i store in here is my my fizzing needles anything random passenger seat i keep all my gopro stuff i keep an extra set of of uh my way balls and some tools some sunscreen and my safe release from aba this stuff works awesome the seats also have a speaker in them but we'll get to the stereo in a minute so in the driver's seat they have this little ram mount to put your cell phone on i clip my boomerang tool underneath there it just makes it convenient to cut stuff here without having it in my way all the time i do have a tendency to forget it at home if i don't have it clipped to the boat somewhere so the bass cat steering wheel not a circular thing some people don't like it some people hate it some people love it i'm getting used to it i think it's easier as a grip point to, to do that so I completely understand the engineering on that a JL audio system in the boat it has the, the speakers down there in each in each splash well and then like I showed before it has the tweeters in the actual seats themselves have the Merck smart craft gauge connected to the outboard that way it can read all my all the stuff I need to in a digital readout but I also have the PSI gauge got the fuel gauge along with the the jack plate gauge on there and then here's the panel here i think it's called an a10 that uh they control all your live wells you check your gas level turn your bilge pumps on your accessories lights horn all that kind of stuff then new to me for this year is hummingbirds it feels weird to say new to hummingbirds because i ran hummingbirds for 15 to 20 years before i went garmin a couple of years ago but now i'm back with hummingbirds nothing wrong with the garments the boat came with the hummingbirds these are two 12 inch uh gen 4 helix and then i also have that on a bass boat technologies mount looks real sweet and this is where i mount my gopro mount when i'm fishing is just right on top of there seems to work out so well um, I've already done one, well, one tournament with it mounted there this weekend, and it seemed to work great. Another cup holder up front. That cup holder has a dual purpose. You can either use it to put a beverage in, or what I used it for this weekend was when I was putting a rod down, I would set the bait in there and not have it dangling around on the deck. So now, up at the front lockers, the era is laid out with coffin style lids i don't know any other boat that has coffin style lids the first one on the left is where i keep all my rods i have let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven rods in there it'll probably hold three times that amount if i actually like put them down and stack them more next one is where I have all my gear I have boxes upon boxes upon boxes in there and then up front underneath it all you can even throw like bags of stuff and Ken Smith from Ken Smith fishing thank you for this idea on the bags they work amazing
Now up front, the small box is just a day box. Keep all the stuff that you use all the time right up in there. Gotta have my duo baits up there. Right behind that is more storage. And as you can see in there, there's also a tray for your uh, your net. I guess I didn't go over that too, very well on the other side, so we'll open that one back up. The net scabbard is right in the bottom of there. This is where I keep my lighter stuff, my crankbaits, lipless, a few boxes of plastics back here in the back. Far side, uh, I have an empty Bass Mafia bait coffin there, a couple life jackets, a seat, cleaning towel. I'll throw my rain gear and whatnot in there as well. But I try to keep weight off of this side just be to offset the driver. The very front where the business gets done. This year I'm running the Minn Kota Ultrax with the Humminbird 360 Mega on there. It's the 112 volt or the 112 pound thrust 36 volt motor. Then I have the stomp switches for my uh, my Minn Kota Raptors up there. That's just where Bob had them mounted. I don't know if I'll keep them there or move them around, but so far I like them there. They don't get in my way. Along with a voltage gauge. I can always check the voltage on my trolling motor batteries while I'm running out there. Then I have my dual Humminbird Helix 10s up here. I like the double stack mount. I think in the future I may run a triple stack because I want some form of live imaging up here as well. Uh, no matter which brand I, I go with. Bob did run the uh, Humminbird Mega Live on this system, on the Elite Series this past season. Um, but unfortunately, he was not allowed to sell that with the boat due to contract. Uh, they weren't, Humminbird uh, told them they weren't allowed to sell it with it. So it's pre-wired for it. So he left all the wiring in here for it. So if I do decide to buy that deucer, I can just throw it on here and just plug it in. Now, the trolling motor pedal on an era is something completely unique to Bass Cat as far as I'm aware of. I can change my pedal position at any point in time that I want to. I like the pedal more forward. And uh, you can move it back. I might have to move it back if I go with a triple screen setup up here. But for now, I'm running it forward. I like to roll cast. And if you're a roll caster, you will want that foot pedal up front. Or if you're fishing a bunch of top waters where you're you know, slapping that rod back and forth a ton of times and don't want to hit any of your sonar or any of your top of your trolling motor and whatnot. It just makes it more convenient to stand further up. It just gives you more room. Bass Cat also has a battery tender. So you can completely unplug your trolling motor if you want to. That's nice. I've heard some stories about certain trolling motors not liking to be plugged into power constantly. This switch up here powers on any of your accessories up here, like that switch powers on my Humminbird 360 and along with the, the panel over here for your trim up and down buttons um, and along with your, your voltage for your, your trolling motor. Moving on to the trailer, starting at the very front, you have your Bass Cat grab pole to jump up and down makes it really easy to get in and out of the boat. And I like that it came with it, not something I had to special order to put on here. Then the two position strap here. A lot of people don't know what, what this is for. People look at bass gas and think, what in the heck are you doing with two rollers on the front? You can use the first one through here to pull the boat onto the roller as normal. Then once you get it up onto dry land, run it through the bottom and it pulls, has downward for force, pulling down on the bow guide onto the roller to hold it onto it. I think that's just a, a neat little trick that uh, Rick Pierce has added to these boats that's just amazing. You have your spare tire holder underneath there. Little marker lights through the trailer. 
back to the fiberglass fenders. What's nice about these fenders is there's multiple spots that you can put your feet on without having to put your foot on the fiberglass. Back to the back where you have your extremely bright backup lights. I lit up the entire launch yesterday trying to put this in the water. Best cut also includes this step pad. So to get up on here using this, one, two, three. Just as easy as that. If you have a bunch of sonar in the way, it makes it a little more difficult. But not too bad. Overall, this boat is absolutely amazing. Rick Pierce, you have outdone yourself in the engineering of this thing. There are little things, the longer I own this boat, that I've noticed that are put into here that are just angler perfect. If you have OCD, this boat might not be right for you. <laughs> just, I mean, with two splits instead of two, two big center ones would probably get somebody having your live well lid not be centered between the two seats would probably bug people latches too far to the to the passenger side would probably drive people nuts um the more i own it the more i see why rick did this and here is another thing that is awesome about these bass cat boats so these back lids come up you undo the strap on it they are completely removable if you've ever tried to work on the back of a skeeter or a ranger or whatnot you have to have the lids just sit here flipped up like this while you're trying to bend over and work on them it's a pain in the butt and it's about time someone in the industry did this thank you Rick to go back on line it up Connect it, drop it down, easy as that. Overall, this boat is an amazing piece of machinery and I am completely glad that I made the purchase of this. I'll do another video after I get the wrap off of it whenever I do decide to take it off there because the colors on this boat are just amazing underneath it.